All right, kids, here we are on another adventure on Timber Hollow Road. Now, I've never been on this road in my life. I've gone past it several times. I don't know where it goes, but that's where we're going. No challenges this time. We're back to stories and shit that you don't care about. <laughs> no, we're back to normal this time. And, um... You know, we were talking about some names of other weird roads that we've seen before. And, you know, I think it bears repeating. Because why the fuck not? And what do you know? And we come up on a dead end. So, uh, we're just gonna have to turn around and end this little excursion. But, uh, anyway... Uh, while we're turning around, I'm going to mention what I was talking about. Some names of roads that we've encountered in the past that are amusing or funny or, you know, just kind of odd. And uh, one of the ones that I was mentioning, which is not quite near here, it's not that far from here, but it's not here. But anyway, um, it's called Nipple Road. I don't know if it's named after someone who just happened to be named Nipple or if somebody was being funny. But that's a real road that really exists. <clears throat> um, another one that I was talking about that I know at least two instances of, but one has since been renamed, but Gobbler's Knob Road. Now, for those of you who... Uh... Whoa! Oh! oh. That was God good. damn. That was a nice uh, rut. But anyway, um, for those of you who know what Punxsutawney Phil is and about Groundhog Day, Gobbler's Knob is a place near Punxsutawney, PA, which we are not really that close to. This was a terrible way to pull out of here. But uh, yeah, all well, fucking yeah. We're out of here. Right. We're at. We're and we're now out of the worst road we've ever picked on one of these. But anyway, um. Gobbler's Knob Road is kind of an amusing name. The one of them has since been renamed Turk's Lane, I guess, so not to confuse the two. But, uh, yeah. Uh, I'm trying to think of the other ones I was talking about. I want to save the good one for last. Um, well, if you remember back to our, uh, one of our past videos, what was that? Into the Unknown? Yep. Boogersburg Lane. <laughs> oh I, my god! But it's Boogersburg Lane. Lane! Yeah, but I actually went back through there recently and checked, and there is actually a sign for it. Yep. That is its legit name. Yep. That was not a mistake. But, uh... The one that I was building up to is one that the sign was along the side of the road for years. And, you know, we might we could almost rename this the Nate Talks About His Neighbor Show. But he's the one that introduced me to this road that I'm about to talk about. Uh, before we get to that, though, we have a choice here. We can turn right onto Parchwood Road. Now I'm going to keep going. Or we can try that 3007 road coming up ahead. Yep. I thought you might go for that one. Anyway, he introduced me to this road years ago. And the sign was along the road for years. Yep, yeah, but here comes our next turn onto 3007 Road. Hell of a name. That's a weird name there. Anyway, enough distractions from the story. Um, job. And I couldn't believe it until I saw it. But it was a real road. And that's it. That's it. We just kind of whiz bang by it. But uh, that's all right. We can circle back around. But, um, it's out in the middle of farm country, so the name makes sense when you're, when you hear it. The sign is no longer along the road, though, for reasons that are about to be very apparent. It was called Cow Shit Lane. Cow Shit Motherfucking Lane. Yes. Just make a left on one of these side roads that they loop up around. But anyway, but like I was saying, yeah, it was cow shit lane. And I think you can see why they had to take the sign down. 
Because, I, I, I mean, I don't really think that is a name that would fly this day and age. Because I'm sure that road was named a long time ago by some farmer. Watch cow shit lane. That cow shit lane there, son. <laughs> Ping. Ping. Yep. So, yeah. That was a thing and that happened. And, uh, I'm trying to think of some other weirdly named roads that I've encountered over the years. I can't think of too many offhand. I'm sure a whole shit ton of them will come to me long after we're done making this video. Yeah, probably. Because that's just how shit goes. I, you know, this happens all the time. I always think of more stuff that I could have talked about in these after we're done rolling. And, uh, I, I babble a lot in between <laughs> segments. Yeah. I'll ramble about shit, you know, that we've talked about 7,500 times. Yeah. And sometimes I'll ramble on and on, and it'll lead me to stuff I want to talk about in the next segment. Like, oh, like you guys only see a little bit at a time when we travel. I mean, we could do this shit for a couple hours a night. You know, I edit it down to a half hour to about an hour long video, depending on how much footage we get. We go all over the place. Like, when you see us cut back into something else, we're very often miles away from where we were before. Yeah. Well, you know, I, I don't like to make the individual segments too long. You know, I like to break it up a little bit. Because, you know, I have a habit of making... Uh, Feature length videos. <laughs> Here yeah. we go. Here's our turn on to 3007 Road, which I'm hoping actually leads us somewhere this time. And looking at the GPS, it appears to be a dead end. But I guess we're going to find out. But uh, yeah. So here we are. We're on 3007 Road. I. Don't even think this road's marked. No, it wasn't. It wasn't marked, but it's on the GPS. And looking at the GPS, uh, there's something out ahead of it, but it appears to just stop according to that. So I don't know what we're going to encounter, who we're going to encounter, or where we're going to encounter, but we're here. And it is somebody's motherfucking driveway so we're yeah we, we we encountered a driveway as it would appear so yeah we're not going here either so that's strike two for the night and uh i think you just took out their flower bed no i didn't you didn't okay we're good all right hopefully they don't watch this show but anyway <laughs> right so there's failure number two yay Kind of coincidental considering we just got done recording a Nate Fails at yeah. <laughs> right before we left. <laughs> Which uh, may be the last video that I posted before this one or the next one, depending on what order I decide to put them up. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Oh shit, now there's fucking lights on. What are they gonna do? We're already gone. You know, we didn't know where we were going. But yeah. But yeah, so there, there was a failure right there. So once we find a road that resembles success, we'll be back. Yep. This has nothing to do with anything. I just thought the moon looked fucking weird tonight and I apologize for us bouncing around since we're going down the road, but it's just weird. It's like not half, it's not full, and it's kind of orange. It keeps going behind trees and shit, but I just think it looks weird tonight, so yeah. I just wanted to throw that in there. So yeah, we still haven't found our uh, road yet, <laughs> yeah. but we're working on it. Zoom back out here. There we go. Yeah. Well, and uh, since we're here, some of you might remember this from a past 
road trip because this is where we went to go get cake. Yeah. <laughs> so we've been uh, that that's pretty much all we've accomplished. We're we're back to the giant store <laughs> where we got cake. So we're gonna have to figure out where we're going here. A A I K. That's okay. right. You wanna get a Kmart cake? I do not. No. All right, you know what? That's going to be the next story. <laughs> All right, th this was going to be a short segment about how fucking weird the moon looked, but now I need to tell the story since it was brought up. I work for a major retailer that I will not mention by name, but it is not Kmart, <laughs> which is why I'm perfectly free to tell this story. Yep. I have three strikes against Kmart. Now, if you like Kmart and you're watching this video, that's fine. You know, you're allowed. Straight right or left? Go straight ahead. Fuck it. We've never gone out that way for a road trip. But anyway, um, if you like Kmart, that's fine. That's your right to do so. But here's why I personally cannot stand Kmart. Um, I was shopping there with my grandmother once. And uh, we only bought two things. She got a set of Valances for in the living room. And for those of you who don't know what a Valance is, it's like a quarter of a curtain. But anyway, because yep. I know not everybody here watches HGTV. So anyway, um, and I bought a CD thing that goes on the visor of your car. And that was literally all we went in there to get. She wanted her Valances, and I bought the CD thing because we were there. Well, we go to the front checkout counter. And this lady, who looked like she was some kind of assistant manager or some shit. I didn't like something about her when we got to the counter, but I just kind of shrugged it off because we were, you know, just trying to get in and out done. But she just seemed like to have this arrogant air about her, and I, my suspicions were soon confirmed. She, like, overcharged us on both of the things that we bought. I mean, they, like, they weren't even on sale. Like, they were regular price on the shelf. And this lady charged us, like, way, way too much. Like, almost double what that stuff was. Mind you, we only bought two Valances and a CD pouch. A 10 CD pouch. Wasn't even a big one. Just 10. I don't remember what the prices were anymore. Not that it matters. And I, I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. Something ain't right here. And mind you, I have worked for my current company twice now. I worked for them briefly in 2008 and I've worked for them since 2010. Two different stores, but the same company. Anyway, cause, so having, you know, worked in retail, I know how it works, you know. Yeah. I understand how retail works. You know, I've been doing it for a while now. But anyway. <laughs> but anyway. Um, what was that? Oh. Skunk. Yeah, it, there's a major skunk stank going on right now. But anyway, so I said, well, that can't be right, because that's not what it was back there. And this lady just kind of looks at me like, the fuck are you talking about? But anyway, so... What are you taking, babe? We, um... We, we got some pharmaceuticals going on in the back seat here. But anyway, not those kind. Get your mind out of there. Anyway, <laughs> um... So she takes us back to the curtain section... And I, at this point, I was still keeping my cool, okay? And I, I very calmly just pointed to the tag and said, now clearly that's what it costs. And she just looks at me, she's like, there is no call for that, sir. And my grandmother's looking, looking at this lady like a fucking space alien, like, what are you talking about, you crazy bitch? He didn't say anything to you that constituted that reaction. Of course, she didn't say that, because that's not how she is, but that was the look on her face. But anyway, and I'm just kind of like, excuse me? But anyway, um, anyway, so we caught her on that one. 
So then we go back to the car section where that thing that I bought was, that CD thing. And this arrogant whore reaches out and starts scratching at the sticker on the hook like as if she was accusing me of sticker swapping. Uh -huh. And I stopped her right there. I said, listen, I work in a store just up the road from here. I don't do that kind of stuff. And she just kind of gives me a dirty look. She's like, well, we'll just give you your money back then. So we, she takes us up to the uh, customer service desk and gives us the difference for what we should have owed her. Yeah. That was strike one against Kmart for me. That bitch. And lady, if you're watching this video, I hate you. Go to hell. I fucking hate you. I don't remember your name, and you better be glad I don't remember your name because I hate you. Because if I did remember your name, I would go back to Kmart just to punch you in your arrogant face. <laughs> That's all I got to say about that story, because the more I think about it, the more pissed off I get. I'm going to move on to story number two now about why I hate Kmart. My mother bought a very expensive pre-lit Christmas tree there. Like one of the really nice seven foot ones. Cause you know, our house is not that big. So the ceilings aren't that high. So seven foot's about as big as you want to go. But anyway, beautiful seven foot Christmas tree that we still use now. You know, it's only been a few years, but I mean, still in nice shape. Very nice. You know, it looks pretty close to real in my opinion, but Anyway, very expensive for all get out. And there was a $35 rebate available. And she was very careful with following the instructions and sending them everything they asked for. Well, we waited for months for this rebate to come in. And it never came. And we were looking at it all, I mean, should we, we kept the paperwork to read down through it, you know. And we did every single thing it specified. And we finally broke down and she called them. She said, where's my rebate? And they gave her this big long line, oh, you didn't send this in or you forgot to do this and blah, 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 blah. And we're like, no, we did all of that. And they said, well, there's nothing we can do. And they hung up. Oh, so we got fucked out of $35 that way. So that was strike two against Kmart for me. Now, in between the two times I worked for my current company, I was looking for a job because, you know, I was just, the first time I worked for them, I was just temporary. You know, I was just there for the holiday season. Yeah. I'll get into some stories about that another time because I've got lots of stories about that. I don't want to say too much because I'm still working for them, but I will share a few stories about that because I told you guys the grill story before in a past video, but anyway. Getting back to my third strike against Kmart, I was looking for work. And I figured, well, since I already have retail experience, I'll apply for Kmart. So I did. I did their online application process. And uh, I applied specifically for one Kmart store. As a matter of fact, it was the one that we just drove past. Because it's the closest one to where I live. You know, there's another one in the other direction, but I didn't want to go to that one because it would have been further for me to travel. And yeah. at the time, I was driving a big ass truck that wasn't that good on gas, and I didn't want to drive any further than I had to. And that Kmart store was like a straight shot from where I live. And I figured, okay, that'll be great. So I went through the application process, it went through just fine. You know, I answered all their questions, did all the bullshit that they want, and a few weeks later, I get a phone call 
from, uh, you know, came up, you know, Kmart on the caller ID, so I knew what they were calling me for. They were calling me in for a job interview. And the person at the other end gave me a very specific date and time to show up. And I was like, great, I'll be there. Okay. So, that morning, I get up and get dressed, you know, get myself fixed up to go in. And I figured I'll go a little early, you know, because I don't know if they're interviewing anybody else or, you know, I didn't know. Who would know, you know? But anyway, I walk in the front door and I go up to the service desk. Mind you, this was after the other two incidents. Like, at that point, I was still a little bit jacked with Kmart, but, you know, getting back on track here, I figure, well, maybe if I work for them, I can do something about these problems. But anyway, I go into the customer service desk, and there's two people working at it, and they kind of look at me funny. And I said, I'm here for the job interview. And they're just kind of looking at each other, they're looking at me, they get on their little computer, and you know, it's very awkwardly quiet at this point. Uh-huh. They, they try to call somebody on the phone that, that didn't answer, apparently. And they look at me, well, they're like, well, we don't have any interviews scheduled today. And I'm like, well, what are you talking about? You people just called me the other day, you know. And they're like, oh, well, well, our manager that does the interviews has the day off today. And I said, so what are you telling me? They're like, well, there's nobody here to give you an interview. and We don't have any record of you being scheduled. So I told them exactly where to go. And I walked out that door, jumped in my truck, and left about half of my rear tires on their parking lot. Yep. And from that day forward, I never set foot in the Kmart store again. Because they fucked me or someone in my family over three times. And that was enough for me to say, fuck you, Kmart. Now, you know, just to be fair here, if you're out, if you're watching this, you know, all two of you that watch this show, (laughs) if you're watching this and you like Kmart, that's fine. You know? Because, quite frankly, I don't know any of you. <laughs> you know, yeah, you want to you want to go to Kmart? Go to Kmart. I don't care. I'm not going to Kmart ever again. And you know, if if you work at Kmart, you know, I feel bad. I mean, I well, what I was gonna say was, if you work at Kmart, you know, if you like it there, fine. You know, if Kmart treats you well, good for you. If they don't, go somewhere else. There, There's better things you can do than working in Kmart, you know? I mean, if it's working for you, fine. If it's not, get the fuck out of there. Yeah. And please, for the love of God, if, you're, if you are a Kmart employee or a Kmart manager or something, please do not treat your customers the way that I have been treated in the past, you know? Nobody deserves that kind of service. Yeah. I work in retail. I work for one of Kmart's competitors. You know, I make it my personal duty to treat all of the people that I deal with fairly. I mean, I can only do so much. I'm a bottom of the totem pole. I'm a fucking cashier. You know, that's what I do. But I'm the guy that has to deal with all the bullshit. I'm the one that gets screamed at when somebody's coupon doesn't work or something like that, you know? And I, don't misunderstand me. I like what I do. You know, it's not a glamorous job, but I don't mind it, you know? So, just speaking as someone who has worked in retail for just a little over four years consecutively now, you know, don't be like the people that I've dealt with at Kmart. Yeah. You know, if you are affiliated with Kmart in any way, shape, or form, please do not treat your people like they have treated me. 
you know, that's all I gotta say about my, my Kmart hate. I, I've rambled enough about that tonight. But since it was brought up, I had to share that. Yeah. I do not know where the fuck we are right now. I have no fucking clue. <clears throat> I don't even know what this road's called. Nope. I don't know where it goes. Nope. I don't know where we are. I've rambled about Kmart now for about the past 15 minutes. <laughs> that was just enough time for us to end up in the middle of nowhere. So yeah, once we figure out where in the fuck we are, we'll be back. Alright, we're on the way back home now. We kind of ran out of random places to go for this one, but that last rant that I just did was kind of long, so... <laughs> anyway... I just wanted to uh, get back on the subject of names of roads and stuff since we're here. We just passed a road that is currently known as Miller's Quarry Road. And I talked about this before, but that's the road that used to be known as Urban Hill Road. And at one point in ancient history, it connected to another part of Urban Hill Road, but now there's like a farm there and you can't drive through it. But there's a big quarry back there, so I think that's where the name Miller's Quarry comes from. But someday, hopefully, we're going to be able to get permission from the people that own the property to walk back in there and check it out. So maybe someday we'll do that. But the other thing I wanted to mention is an idea that we got presented to us for sort of a follow-up to our following the road video. Near here is a place called the Thousand Steps. And I think I might have mentioned this last time. But what that is, I don't think I really explained it. And if I didn't mention it before, you know, don't mind me, but uh, there used to be brickyards near here and they uh, used to go up in there, up these stone steps. There's a thousand of them and that's where they would go up to get on this little train to travel around the top of the mountain to mine for silica to make bricks. And you can still go up there. It's like a tourist attraction now. You can actually, you know, walk up there and see the old shed where they kept the little train cars in and stuff and look out over the mountain and stuff. We want to do that one of these days. Yeah. Hopefully before this summer's over, we'll do that. I don't know if I can still get my fat ass up there, but I'm certainly going to try. So yeah, that's a thing that we're going to do. But uh, before we head back, make a left up here because I want to tell an another couple of stories. Don't forget to tell them Yes, I'm leading up to that one. But I want to go this way to tie into that one. See, the, there was a story I promised them I would tell, and I'm going to tell you guys here, but I want to tell a couple other ones first. This road we're on right now, Mount Hope Road, you know, uh, takes us back here just off through, you know, the farmlands and stuff. It's not very long, but, um, years ago, I used to have an old GMC van. And there's a side road that shoots off of here. It's called Vineyard Road. And it hey, was... Gillum Road. Yeah, hey, yeah, how about that? Uh, Yeah, Very similar, but different. Anyway, and we went back this side road. Yep. By the way, I just want to point out that none of us have ADHD. We just seem that way. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> oh. So we went down this side road, and um, we were going, I don't really know how fast we were going, maybe 30 or 40. And it, it was a very dry summer that year so the road was dusty and we were leaving a bit of a dust cloud behind us i mean yeah we were being kind of rowdy that day but we were you know we were out fucking around you know we yep. were like 18 years old that's what we what you do when you're 18 and you have a means of transportation that you can fuck around in you go out and fuck around yep so that's what we were doing we were just that minding our own business. We weren't bothering anybody, you know. It's not no. like we were really raising any kind of hell that day. 
So we, it's a dead end road. So we turned around and came back. You know, there wasn't much to see back there except like an old water tower. Ooh, big excitement, <sighs> you know. And uh, we get back and there's like, whoa. There's like four or five people standing in the middle of the road, staring at us. And we're looking at them and then looking at one another like, what the Yeah, they're fuck? looking at each other, they're looking at us. <clears throat> we're, we're about to pass where this all took place. It's up here on the left. We're, we, we're not going to go back there. I just wanted to come back this way to tell this story. And they stop us and I roll down the window and I'm like, like, is there a problem here? And they're like, we don't drive like that around here. And I'm thinking, well, what are you talking about? And then they're like back looking at my license plate and they're like, they're like threatening to call the police. And I'm thinking, go ahead. You can't prove anything. You know, I don't believe there is any posted speed <laughs> limit on that road now, is there? No. No. It's, it's, it's a dead end it's dirt fucking road. fucking secondary dirt road. Who gives a fuck how fast you go? So we made a little bit of dust. Big fucking deal. It settled after about 20 seconds and then you can go about your lives. You know, if there, if I would have seen like kids or something running around, I would have slowed the hell down or turned around or not even gone back there. But there, as far as I could see, there was not a living soul around. But then all of a sudden, like we're bombarded, the entire Hatfields and McCoys show up. You know, it's like, come on now. So anyway, we got out of there without incident. You know, we just took off and finished about our merry way. So yeah, that was a little story I wanted to tell back here. But anyway, this is the big finish that I <laughs> promised. Before we set out to do this, we stopped at the Sheets station in town here to get something to eat. And we're standing there waiting for our food. And this local town cop comes in. And he's getting food, and he's standing there, and you know they're Shit. they're bullshitting, and they're giving this guy a hard time because you know that's what they do. You know, everybody likes to fuck with a cop. You know, and you know we're just kind of there talking about whatever we were talking about at the time, and um, he has to walk out the door. Hey, Woody. Hey. Yeah, they, they called this guy Woody. I don't know what his right name is. Maybe that's his name. I don't know, but they called him Woody. Anyway. And they're like, hey, did you pay for that? Oh, shit. He's like, no, oh, shit. No, I didn't. <laughs> yeah, the fucking cop was about to walk out without paying for his shit. Yeah. And pretty much everybody in Sheets was just dying. <laughs> He's like, oh, shit. No, I didn't. Uh, that was funny as fuck. And they're giving, they're busting on him hard. It's like, oh, you could have pulled yourself over, you know, all this <laughs> shit. And it's like, I'd call E. Long and have him pull your ass over for that. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, you know. Yeah, so that, that was our, uh, what the fuck moment tonight. <laughs> yeah, so. WTF, what the fuck? Seriously. So yeah, tonight's episode didn't have too many stories and it was mostly just me bitching about Kmart, but you know, that's how this shit goes sometimes. Yeah. Fuck. So yeah, that's all I got for this one. So uh, whatever video we decide to do next, we'll see you there.